Hi, um, I'm Bob Terry, sitting here with James Hampton, right after Wild West Toys, third annual vintage toy show here in Asia, Texas. And uh, James has been uh, graced us with his presence uh, by being here with us and uh, meeting all the guests and signing autographs and everything. And uh, we just uh, thank you so much for coming, James. It's my pleasure. My wife, Mary, and I have enjoyed every minute of it. You know, I tried to get my wife to sit here with us and uh -huh. talk, to, talk with us. You Mine know. wouldn't come yeah, in. Neither one of them would come. <laughs> oh, no. They'll have to get a pedicure before they show yeah, up. Yeah, I look awful. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but uh, I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions. I hadn't got much chance to visit with you. Um, well, you were pretty busy. Uh, so were you. Well, thank you. Um, how did you get, we were watching you, uh, last night we were watching you on uh, on the series F Troop. Oh my. And you're very young oh, on yeah. that. And uh, you know, and you'd done a few things before then, you know, yes. a, a bit of stuff. Yes. But how did you get the part on F Troop? I believe it had something to do with God because, I'll tell you why. Um, I had done three Gunsmokes, some Dr. Kildare, they, uh, Gunsmoke was thinking about adding me as another character on the show. Uh -huh. I, I, I played the part of Jeb a couple of times. Um, um, and I finished my third uh, Gunsmoke. And the director uh, said, let's, let's go have a drink or let's go have a bite or something like that. And we went to this place. Um, and and it, it, I didn't know this, that important people hung out there, you know. But he introduced me to uh, a man who was the casting director at Warner Brothers. And he said, you know, have your um, agent call me because there's something I think you might be right for. Well, naturally, I forgot about it. I went on about <laughs> And a couple of days later, my agent called me up and said, you need to get to Warner Brothers right, right away. They've been looking for you. Oh, wow. And I said, oh, okay. I had been out of the Army at that time a, a couple of years, two or three years. Uh, while I was in the Army, I was in uh, 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 the cavalry, but it's the armored cavalry. It's right. not, not real horses and stuff like that. I was in the 6th Armored Cav, stationed in... Uh, Louisville, Louisville, and uh, where Fort Knox is. Yeah. And that's where I was. And I was an F troop of the 6 Armored Cab. And so I go to Warner Brothers and they hand me this script to look at. And it says F troop. And I went like, well, because me and God had a deal. Oh, really? You know? Yeah. We had a, we had a, a tete a tete. We, we, I, I didn't know that you could have a conversation with God, but that's what it was. Gideon I, did. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I was on the Czechoslovakian border, and snow was axle deep to a Ferris wheel, and uh, we got loaded guns pointed at Czechoslovakians, and they got loaded guns pointed at us, and they're waiting for somebody to say, start the war. And it was just, it just seemed so absurd. and. And I started, I started walking through the woods there in Bavaria. And I just opened my heart to say, Lord, is this the best that we can do, you know, and, and this and that. And it, so it got to, what is it you want to do? And I said, well, I want to be, a, I want to be an actor. Well, what's stopping you? <laughs> well, I'm in the Army and everything, you know. And, and they said, no. Now, it's like a conversation. All right. And, and, and God said to me, no, what's stopping you is fear. It, if you don't try, you're sure not going to make it. But if you try your best and you don't make it, you'll still feel okay because you did your best. So I thought, well, that makes a lot of sense. And I said, okay, I'll... Um, I'll do that as soon as I get out of the Army. He said, oh, no, no. You're going to start right here, right here where we are. It's like saying, what do you got in your hand? I got a stick. That's all you need. That's all you need. <laughs> so he said, uh, it's Christmas Day, so you can take today off. But by Monday, we're going to start this deal up. So now, I mean, he didn't use it that way. But I mean, right. the thoughts of this, 
I never had any thoughts like that before. On Monday, somebody had opened up my file somewhere in headquarters and headquarters. They need somebody to run a spotlight because a colonel is going back to the States and they're going to have a little party for him. And he come across that I was a theater major at North Texas State. He must know how to run a, a spotlight. Well, I got three days TDY to go to headquarters and headquarters. Turned out that he, he, the entertainment director was going home pretty soon too. The colonel asked me, could I run things? I'm a PFC. I said, yeah. Um, and um, I stayed for the next year and a half. And I, I won best actor in Europe in the armed forces. I put on plays. I took people to USO and, and we did. And I was an actor in the army. And so, See, I didn't even know that, that that job existed. Okay, neither did I. <laughs> neither did I, but he did. So I get out of the army, and uh, first thing I do is go back to my college that I uh, and and uh, I, they they said, "What are you going to do? You what are you going to do about your acting?" I said, "Well, I said I'm. I heard that that they're doing some plays over in Fort Worth, Casa Manana." I, I thought maybe I'd give this guy a call, and this lady, she was a professor, she ran the opera department. She said, no, don't call him. Go make sure you talk to him. You go and wait for him to talk to him. And I just did that, exactly. And the guy hired me. Wow. And I got my equity card and went to New York City. After I did four shows, I got an equity card. I went to New York to be an actor. And while I was there, I did a short subject film that won, that was nominated for an Academy Award. And um, so that led to F Troop and that led to, and, I, and that led to actually uh, all those other things before F Troop. And there I'm sitting with a, with a script that says F Troop. Well, I went in, I read, I, I read it so I had it and I went in and did it without holding on the script or anything like that. And as I got about, they said, thanks very much. I walked out the door and I started to go downstairs. And I, I realized there weren't any more people there. So I was the last, last one and I was, that was the right one. And the director walked out the door and said, Jimmy. I said, yeah. He said, you're our bugler. I'm gonna start crying if I'm doing it. Here I said, "You're a bugler." Now listen to this. We get to the to the set in Warner Brothers, Fort Courage, and the stanchions and the ammo boxes and the wagons. F cross sabers. Six. The same outfit that I was in at Fort Knox, Kentucky. That's, that's amazing. Yes. That's, that's unbelievable. It's the same outfit. So, so I know I'm on the right track. You know, if, and, you, uh, if you turn your life over to God, you, you have to be doing what he wants you to do because you've surrendered your life. Correct. If you surrender your life, you, you know, and God will put you in strange places where you think, how am I doing what God yeah. would have me do? You have to say, <laughs> uh, do we still have the same deal? Yeah. <laughs> So it's just, yeah. you just, and, and, but you know, and so I used to worry about it. I think, you know, am I doing what God wants me to do? Because I'd be heading down a road and I think, you know, on, in, in the, you know, way I'm, I'm making a living or whatever, you know, and I, I would think, you know, how do I know? And then it just dawned on me one day, you know, I'd surrendered my life to God and God will put the, his desires on your heart when you surrender to him. And then you, you have to be on the right road. He, he won't break the contract. No. We're the ones that are sometimes. Yeah, and when you do that, you know it. Little, you don't just think you may be doing something I out know. of line. You know you're doing something out of line. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're looking over your shoulder. Is God still back there? Is he still? <laughs> well, actually, he, he, he might be up here somewhere, really, and that's where you ought to be going. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But it's always, to me, it's always fear. 
That's the problem. Yeah. I, it's afraid, yeah. Uh, you know, that this won't, you know, I don't, it's, if it's, if you just go through the doors that God opens for you, just see what happens, you know. But I get way out ahead. I just need to stay right where I am and take the next step forward. So uh, you got anything that you're doing lately? You got anything? You're going to festivals and things. I yeah. know that. Yeah. And, and people love meeting you. People love seeing you. We've seen you at a few things. Thank you. And uh, people just, uh, you know, they, they're usually clamoring around your table. And wow. I think because, you know, now there's there's a lot of different ways to, to that attracts people people to you you know Roy Rogers is one way you know he's always the hero guy but you made people laugh <laughs> and you know that's people when people are laughing they can forget about a lot of things so so are you doing anything right now besides that are you well I did a little part in a, in a movie called um, fire from below it's a sci-fi Ken I um, mean uh, Kevin Sarbo is a star okay a good right. guy and they're supposed to that's supposed to come out this fall on the Sci-Fi Channel, um, did another little um, uh, film in Dallas, um, which is totally um, Christian-based, and uh, Mark Cuban had something to do with. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, and I don't know what they're going to do with it, how they're going to market it, or whatever. But I played a kind of um, uh, pastor emeritus who talks to couples and helps them out. And, so forth and so on. I had a wonderful scene, and uh, and so I I've had a chance to do a couple of things and been working on the book, and um, excited about that. What, talking, what, what's the book? What kind of book? What is it? Kind of like what we're talking about, uh, but just stories about the people that I've met and had the pleasure uh, of meeting and and little things that would happen and be funny. You know, one time, for instance, Larry Starts was. Uh, who played uh, yes. uh, Carpal Ego. Yeah, on, right. And he's so funny. And he was just moping around. And and, and Forrest Tucker, who run things on that set, you know, he said, Larry, what's the matter with you? Yeah, like you lost your best friend. What's the matter? He said, oh, he says, my wife bought me a new pair of glasses. She said, um, don't you come home without them glasses. Them are $80 glasses. <laughs> and he says... He said, I looked everywhere. <laughs> I can't find them glasses. And his wife is tough. And, he's, and Tuck said, we call him Tuck. He said, now take it easy. Did you look in the, po in the pocket of your set chair? He said, no. He said, why not? He said, I can't do that, Sarge. What are you talking about? He said, well, if they ain't there, they're really lost. <laughs> now that's... <laughs> He ain't trying to be funny. That's just who he is. One time. Scared to death to look in the right place. We were turkey. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> they're, they're not there. They're, just they're gone. And I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And oh, a, a, another time, we were working on the script. We always sat around on Mondays and went over the script. And sometimes the jokes work great. Sometimes they don't. And you, you start worrying about them and trying to fix them and so forth. And we just... We come across, we, the producers, the director, the cast, we, we just can't seem to, to fix it. And Larry gets up and starts pacing back and forth. And he says, a great idea. And we go, what, what, what? He said, that's what we need, a great idea. <laughs> and you know what? We put it in the script, just like that. <laughs> Because it was between him that's what we need. and Chuck, you know, and that's what they needed was a great idea. That's always what's needed. <laughs> that is, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we need, a great idea. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Wow. Well, uh, so you're working on a book? Um, yeah. Any kind of... That kind of stuff, just that kind any, of stuff. So any kind of uh, uh, projection of when, when you will have it ready for people to look at? I... It's kind of ready. Um, I, a friend of mine, here we go again, but a friend of mine is, um, she's written 13 novels, I think, or one, one cookbook, 12 novels. She's on the New York Times list, and 
and she's a wonderful woman. And she was just happened to be in Dallas uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, and we went to see her, and we're good friends with her. And uh, I used to work for her when she was writing on television, and I was, I was uh, directing at the time. And uh, so she encouraged me to write. And uh, so I wrote, and then I decided not to even do anything, but just whatever comes that day, tell that story. And so I started doing that, and I, I wanted to find out from her if that was if, if this is working. And so Mary and I printed up uh, you know, a little stack of stuff right. and, um, and I gave it to her and, and she'll give me her, um, you know, she'll, I'm sure will have some ideas and how to do it and so forth. But, but it'll, be, it'll be a sentence or two, you know, she'll, she'll able to just get, and she's just a wonderful person. So. I, that's where the book is at this point, um, and she told me what would happen if, you know, if uh, they wanted to do it. I, I didn't want to um, uh, encumber our, uh, our family, Mary and I, uh, by publishing my own. You know, I know that you can do that, and, mo yeah. and most of the guys do that. I, you know, if it's going to be what it's going to be, then take it to random house, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go, yeah. Just go to the best, whatever that is. Exactly. And uh, and so we'll see. We'll see. And it may be something that'll happen pretty quick or maybe it'll take a little bit longer, but um, I've got a lot of stories and uh, and they're all good. That's that's fantastic. I, I can't wait to Get your book. I can't yeah. wait to see it because the stuff. If it's stuff like what you just told me about Larry and all that, yeah. that's just that's that's funny stuff. And then some serious stuff too. I guess. Yeah. So. The the thing I've, I've I've worried about a little bit is some of the language, but not not very much. But some of the language is a little salty. But it's not me talking that way. It's, and it's not. And it's so I decided to go ahead and write what I've heard and and what what was funny uh -huh. and uh so we'll see i mean uh, i'm a little bit concerned about it but it's not gonna be, it's not a book book for kids really and it's not i'm probably making more out of it than it does but i've never in in my life on, on in any film said even anything i never you know and some of the you can't, you can't. You know what? I didn't even ask anybody. I just did. I just cut them out. I just didn't and went ahead, and nobody ever said anything to me. But when I was a little boy, about six or seven, there was a group of, of uh, actors that called themselves the Mad House or the <laughs> some. I'm trying to remember the name of. Uh, um, they had. They were tent. They had a tent. It was outside of. Um, uh, the, the walls or the gates uh, of, the, of the state fair and they had this big tent and they had uh, uh, wood chips on the floor and so mm -hmm. forth and so on and the leading man who was all you know dressed up in a tuxedo and everything with a glass of he, he said the word damn and and I was shocked I was <laughs> like six or seven years old I was terrible and at that time, it occurred to me, if I become an a actor, I won't talk that way. <laughs> good. And as it That's turned good. out, I didn't. I've often wondered about that. You know, I, I just assume a lot of times that, because I've heard actors say things that I, I didn't think would be relevant to the time period that the movie was being made in, or you know, relevant to the what the movie was being made about, and they they've used language that I just thought, you know, you, you wouldn't have heard that sort of thing back then, and they throw it in, and I'm thinking, I've wondered, was that not in the script, and they just did it, and then, and I've also wondered about other actors, you know, do they, do they just purposely leave stuff out, you know, I know a lot of impromptu stuff goes on, but I've often wondered about things like that, and you just confirmed some of it, that's, that's fantastic, that's, uh, thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you for, for coming out here today, and, uh, Blowing my own horn. Well, I hate talking about myself that way. <laughs> I'd rather tell stories about other people. <laughs> well, you did about Larry and stuff. That's good. Yeah. But thanks for coming out. And Thank you. Uh, one more question. Yeah. How long did they make after? 
Two years. See, that's what I thought. I thought it was just two years. It, it's amazing the response you get out of people when you talk to them about F Troop and you know, and they remember it so well, but it was only made for two years. That's right. That is that is amazing. Well, then a flying nun came in, so. <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather watch F Troop. <laughs> thank you, Larry. I, yeah. Thank you. Larry. <laughs> thank you, Chase. <laughs> I was thinking Larry, he wasn't here. If we're talking about it. That's Thank okay, Will. That's yeah. okay, Willie. <laughs> That's my brother's name. No, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Thank you so much.